A mass life. That's what Jesus said. A mass life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. In the class of the spiritual, money is the last. It's the last. He doesn't come first. It's last. In the class of the spiritual. So what do you mean by that? I'm talking about the list of spiritual verities. Okay, the list of spiritual verities. When you are listing them, money comes last. Take this and, 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 and leave this as an inheritance for your children. This is a good man, leave it inheritance to, to his children. Inheritance. This is an inheritance. You call it and say, my children, before I leave this earth, I leave this for you. That this is a description of your future with God. Your life is a vineyard of red wine. Not like the one Jacob was giving them different things by the Spirit of God. This one, you give them the same thing. Say, boy, my angel, your life is a vineyard of red wine. And thus says the Lord, I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment. Lest any hurt it. Do you understand that? Lest any hurt it. Lest Amrabah hurt it. Let's get out. So you see that this, this is a life where you no longer hear those kind of things. He says, I will keep it night and day. So you're traveling at night, not to worry about. Traveling by day, not to worry about. Because I, the Lord, do keep it. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I'll, I'll just leave it. I go and spend time with it alone and dance with it and shout with it and, and do my thing with it in private because I know how I, how I do things with scriptures. And many times I start going about the house talking, saying things like, if Christ be in you. <laughs> you know, we play with these things. But if you don't know how to rehearse, you form, you, you know, the scripture must form your mantra. Your mantra. Truth must form your mantra. You can so you can raise a song with it. I have you the red wine. I'm a vine of red wine. Care by the Lord, water by the Lord. Nothing hurts it. Glory to God. He keeps it night and day. Fire the red wine. Kings are honored by it. Queens are honored by it. All men are coming to it. I'm a vine of red wine. Vine of red wine. Glory to God. You know that just came. I hope it's, it's kept on. I don't mind working on that. You know, track three. <laughs> Or maybe that could be a hit song, you know. We're going to, what do you call it? The billboard, they call it. What is they call it? Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I'm a vineyard of red wine. And guess what? That song just talked. A vineyard of red wine. A vineyard of red wine. You, you know, you can, you can be a, a, a vineyard of bitter warm wood. A vineyard of bitter, bitterness, like you call water of bitterness. You can be that vineyard. You can be a fruitless vineyard. But I'm a vineyard of red wine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, woo, woo. Glory to God. Boy. Don't worry. We'll come up with things. We'll work on this. We'll work on this. Okay. You see, I will work on this. Vineyard of red wine. You can choose to be white wine, but I'm red wine. <laughs> you can be kind, kind. <laughs> but I'm red wine. Oh, boy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh boy. Did you just learn something there? Of course, I, I learned something from it. So I, you should, you should. If I, if I did learn something, you should learn something from me. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's get back to phase two of what we already started. This is phase two of what we started. We started um, um, a series on Christ formed in you or the fullness of Christ. Okay. We said that already and um, you have to fly with me right now. Okay. Uh, Playtime is up. The fullness of Christ. So this is phase two of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, in the, in the previous teaching on this series, or the previous teachings on this series, uh, I said something that Spirit of God brought back to mind as I was preparing for this phase two of it. And um, this was what the Lord told me. I said that last time, but Spirit of God began to break it down for me for, for, for a, an elaborate discourse. Okay? And, and this is what I said by Spirit of God last time. And it's here again. But this time around, the Lord brought it down and said to me, this is actually the, 
the, the five levels of God's will for your salvation. It was a statement the first time I made it by the Spirit of God. But now just it's actually the five, the five levels, right, of God's will for our salvation. What was the statement? This is what I said, okay, by the Spirit of God. I said, until you understand God's purpose for your salvation, oh boy, Lord, thank you so much. Until you understand God's purpose for your salvation, you will struggle with the motivation and momentum for spiritual growth. I'm sure you remember that, right? Beautiful. Until you understand God's purpose for your salvation, you will struggle with the motivation and momentum for spiritual growth, all right? But then I have something that said, and then I wrote something that said, as a matter of fact, you won't even have any of them. You won't have momentum and motivation for spiritual growth. As a matter of fact, you will not even have the, you will lack the motivation and momentum for spiritual growth. You will lack it or you will lack them. I told you some time ago, I said, um, understanding is the source of passion. Understanding is the source of passion. Have you seen people who are very passionate of rugby? I've seen people very passionate of rugby. It's a, it's, it's a type of sport, rugby. And you wonder why. <laughs> What is this? They pledge their lives for it. They pledge houses and cars for rugby. They say, um, um, uh, the, I don't know their names now. The, the district of New Zealand will win the district of South Africa. They have the different names. Just, you, have, you have the, the Red Devils and you have the, or the, the Gunners or whatever you call them. They have their names too. I'm, I'm passionate of it. Say, we are winning tomorrow. Say, what is that? Say, it's rugby, man. You don't like rugby. You are missing something. <laughs> you say, why? I've seen people who don't like football, who don't even know what is it. I, I met a lady who was telling me, he said, I can't understand how you put something around at the middle and people are running up and everybody shout. <laughs> I said, it's because you don't own. He said, I don't even want to understand it. Everybody just run up and down, they enter the net, you're shouting, go, what's that? Why was she talking like that? Because she doesn't understand the game of football. So understanding is the source of passion. Then I said purpose is the substance of passion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, hey, come on. Have you wondered why... People are not, are not, are not, um, I'm looking for something to, are not exceptionally desperate for spiritual growth. Have you wondered why? The way people crave for success in life, the desperation people demonstrate or display to have money. People key for money. How many, have you ever seen people key for spiritual growth? <laughs> you don't have that. You, you don't find people debating um, why you must be rich, but they debate why you must grow spiritually, why you must go to church, attend all meetings, go for program, give your first food. Why do you debate these things? Because they lack the understanding of God's purpose for our salvation. Oh, Lord, I'm grateful. We're not saved just to be saved. I've said that so many times. And I'm trusting God that in this new series, that, that, um, th that exp expression will become um, a reality that gets a hold of your mind. Gets a hold of your mind. There is God's purpose for our salvation. 
we're not saved just to be saved. No. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, the, the Old Testament expression of the mind of God clearly delineates the, the purpose of God for our salvation. Okay? The Old Testament expression of the mind of God clearly delineates, okay? I'm sure you know the meaning of delineate. If you don't know it, it means to clearly show or describe something. Delineate. D-E-L-I-N-E-A-T-E. D-E-L-I-N-E-A-T-E, delineate, okay? It also means to portray, okay? To portray, to describe, or to, to, to give in detail. To portray, to describe, to give in detail. Amen. Hallelujah. So I said the Old Testament expression of the mind of God clearly delineates, okay, um, God's purpose for our salvation. Clearly. But you know, it takes the Holy Spirit to make you see that. So there are the five levels Five levels of God's will for salvation. So um, um, rather than just listing them for you, I, I, could, I could list them for you, right? Uh, it may not come out so well until I, I, until I read it, but you can, just, you can just write. Number one, brought us out. You there? Number one, brought us out. In bracket now, out of the world. Okay, brought us out. In bracket of the world. Brought us out of the world. Number two. To bring us in. Right? In bracket. Bring us in, right? In bracket, Christ. Kingdom, glory. Brought us out of the world, right? To bring us in to Christ, his kingdom, his glory. Is that clear? Number three. To give us the land. To give us the land. All right? Bracket open the kingdom. Comma. Airship of all things. Airship. H-E-I-R-O-S-H-I-P. Airship, okay? Of all things. But get closed. Closed. Number four. To dwell among us. To dwell among us. Bracket open in us. If you close the bracket, bracket closed. And number five. To be envied and desired through us. You get that? To be envied and desired through us. Okay, now, and rather than coming up with different terms, I'll leave it this way. As I read the scriptures to you, understand what all of this is about. You know, because many times, listen, let's, let's, let's try and, uh, as much as we to frame, if possible, that statement. Until you understand God's purpose for our salvation, you will struggle 
with the motivation and momentum for spiritual growth. Have you ever wondered why people don't, the apostles don't, all don't say they need to speak in tongues for two hours like I do. What, why do I have to do that? Lack of understanding. Why do you give like you do? Lack of understanding. Why do you have to study the Bible that much? Lack of understanding. And that was the reason why Paul said, when I heard of your faith, I cease not to pray for you. That the Lord will grant you. Look at it. Ephesians chapter 1. Book of Ephesians chapter 1. Just a few verses, okay? Um, Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 15 to 18, okay? This is so important, people. Hallelujah, glory to God. Okay, from verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, Okay, don't miss it. Verse 15 again. Wherefore I also, talking about Paul the Apostle, referring to the, um, the Ephesian Christians. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know, you see that now? That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Praise God. So when I heard it, he said the next, the first I have to do is to pray for that the Father of our Lord Jesus will grant you spirit of wisdom and, and revelation in knowledge of him. It's important that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know the hope of this calling. That means I want to know the purpose of God for our salvation. That is not just to be saved, to make heaven, as many confuse it for. Not just to make heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Look at something. Deuteronomy chapter 6. There are, there are um, too many people in the body of Christ who don't understand anything at all. Who don't understand anything at all. Who are just there. Hallelujah. Did, did you know that um, the mental processing of information is what gives birth to attitude? The mental processing of information is what gives birth to attitude. Did you also know that the mind is the information processing center of the human body? The mind is the information processing center of the human person. I want to do um, an extensive teaching on compostmentis. Because we haven't even started compostmentis. Yes, we've had two camp meetings. The very first one for compostment and then the last one. We haven't even started compostment because the Lord is taking me deeper on how to delete all the information in your mind and your spirit. 
And those are the things we need to do rather than basing on deliverance from ancestral curses. It is deleting information from your mind. And then, you know, I, I came across very important um, information how that the mind can be reorganized and reprogrammed. Oh. If, if you remember clearly, I said something, I said the, the greatest miracle that can happen to a new creation is what? Renewing of the mind. The greatest miracle. I'm, I'm having a very um, busy time of search on this whole issue of the mind. And that led me to another era of, um, of attitude. I want to talk about um, 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 cognitive attitude, um, job-based attitude, life-based attitude, um, 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 site-based attitude, and a number of other things that I'm working on. I'm not even talking about books. Of course, books will come, volumes will come. I already know that we're going to have books. For those who are saying, oh, where are your books? Books are going to come. Enough of them. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not so... Um, I'm not, too, I'm not very, at this moment, um, passionate of books because people don't read as much. Many times, you, just, you, you pour out the best of you in books and people don't find them. People don't read as much. People like to listen more than to read. So I, I still find that the, the, the teaching ministry does more right now than just writing. If people can't even know what's in the Bible, is it books they will go and find? People don't read. People don't invest in books. That's why people don't understand what the Bible says. And that's why people who say, um, um, the, the, the Bible says, heaven help those who help themselves. And many of that thing. And they say, where is it? It says, it's in the Bible. There are many things that have been um, quoted that are from occultic books. And they say, we're from the Bible. Occultic books. So it's good to have books. And many times it's for the pride of ministry, pride of the man of God. I've written so many books. I'm not about how many books I've written. I'm about how many lives have changed. Because people like to just hear rather than read. So when I have taught these things for years, then I feel it's time to archive them for generations to come. Then we'll put them in books. People will find them at that time. I trust God they'll be useful because there are books that have been written that people are not reading. You go to bookstores, you find books of... Great books that have been there for years. I, you, even if you go to some parts of Lagos, you can find books that someone bought and sold back. Tore up a page of, of where, they, where they wrote their names right, and, and their amount. I'm I have books like that. I bought great books that people bought before. They, were, they called them um, second-hand books. I bought second-hand books. Not because I didn't have money to buy new books. No, the Lord just led me there. Because it was someone supposed, that was supposed to be a blessing for someone who that, that just it threw away the blessing. And I saw it and I picked it. Some of my best books, I bought them that way. You find pages torn. Person's name and maybe st stupid things that were written there. But don't read books. Some of us are given to reading. You, you have um, a, a journey to take and you are planning how many hours of that journey you want to read through. <laughs> but we don't do that. Okay? So, but thank God for what he's telling us. Hallelujah, glory. Amen. Mm, Casson Gradish Calaparis, Caro Stojos Ella Glema Steva, Maro Crash Talapastas. Let me tell you why I speak it down sometimes when I teach. It's important. Sometimes when you're teaching and for some reasons you deviate to something else, at some point you forget what you were saying. So when you speak in tongues, your spirit brings it back to mind. So know that now. Now, I didn't say that's why I always speak in other tongues, okay? I like to balance it. But a number of times, that's how I do it. So, I, like, I, I just told you about books now, and then I almost forgot where I stopped. As I said, speaking in tongues, you're talking about the mind. That's how it works. The Holy Spirit is just an incredible person that we have and we have left redundant in our lives. So, for, because I'm raising leaders, you know, so, so that when you are having a meeting and you're teaching, and then somehow along that you're giving an example of football, you end up just closing a football match. Because you can't remember what you were saying. Say, no, no, you know, they scored. You can score in the law. You know, you can score. You, you just know that you are winning. Just when they are winning as a club, now give him praise. Let's go. You can't remember. You are stranded. You are like, ah, shit, where do I stop? You, people will not know that you are, you are trying to remember now. You are, you are just suffering through your mind. 
foot bomber, foot bomber. So, like I was saying, last week they also won, you know, and like this week, I know they, they win the match because where they are, the court is good. So, coaching is important in life. You can't remember. So, what you do is to quickly invite your helper, and you do that by speaking in tongues. So, remember this we invite our helper through speaking in tongues and through declaring the word of God. Okay? We invite our helper through speaking in tongues, through declaring the word of God, and through worship. Don't forget that. So you just, so while you are there, like, hush, in your mind, you're like, oh God, where, where, did I, where did I stop before I went to football? Kiro Masha, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Rakabaya, it will just remind you, you are reading Ephesians. Ah, it will click. But if you don't know how to do that, he will not, that's the body. He knows you need it, but if you don't ask, it will not, he knows you need it. But you have to ask. Otherwise, you just close. Hush. All right, let's close from the next we'll continue from the football match. <laughs> you see, you didn't plan that. And on your way, you are angry. What is all this? Why couldn't I remember? Lord, you didn't remind me. The Lord didn't know if you wanted to be reminded. No, it's true. I said God doesn't work in assumptions. So what you do, please, I hope you are learning it. You just get to where you are stuck like... Nobody should know about that. Don't say, at church, where did I stop? Let's <laughs> stop church, please help me, help me. People do that a lot. I see many of us say, ah, yeah, church, where were we before now? But just care about how you thank you this moment. If after a, short, a few seconds you still don't get it, then you can, church, where did you, it's important. But if after, don't just say, okay, now I want to pray, give me some time to pray, remember, no, no, no. Just go, care about how you Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit of God, Lord, yes. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Okay, remember, if you don't remember, just say, please, excuse me, where, 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 where was I? Because it depends on how close you are with the Holy Spirit. His response depends on closeness. It only depends on his presence, please. His response to your call depends on your closeness. Okay? The relationship you have, not just the presence in your life. So that's important. If you only call on him in times of needs, he will not respond because that's all you have. You need him for and he's wrong. He says, draw nigh to him. He will draw nigh to you. Are you getting that now? So the closer you are to the Holy Spirit, the more responsive he is to you at every point in your life. Don't forget that. The closer you are to the Holy Spirit, the more responsive he is to you at every point of need. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. Don't forget that. And you know the apostles say, God is, God is too good to leave you stranded. <laughs> Many have died before him. Many Christians have drowned before God. Don't deceive yourself by all of those general, general claims. You see, I told you, I told you before now, the last comment we had, I was telling you about, telling you on some, uh, something about um, um, <clears throat> the realm of general knowledge. That those there, they live by hope. They are the mercy of God. We had a chart of, that, of those in that class. If God doesn't give, they don't have. So don't live there at all. Generally, you say, oh, God, no, uh, uh, God cannot let that happen to me. God, God does not curse people. <laughs> I don't know where they're coming from. God does not curse people. I don't know where they, I don't know who I've told them. Uh, you can't curse who God has not cursed. If God has not cursed me, you can't curse me. Uh, people don't understand these things. God doesn't curse people. Wow. It's everywhere. The curses are everywhere. He said, I said before you blessings and curses. He said, because you will not give me, he said, because you will not give honor to me, I have already cursed the blessing. I will spread dung on your face. O ye priest, this curse is unto you. So God does curse. He also does bless. He even told Moses, put the curses in, in Eba, blessings on Gerizim. There are curses and, and, and blessings in the Bible. So don't deceive anybody. Don't deceive yourself about that. All right? So don't say, how can God? God is not wicked. He will respond. Listen, his goodness is not what makes him good. God's goodness is not what makes God good. You have to understand that. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Boy, hallelujah, glory. <laughs> I, I, I'm not deviating from this message, okay? But something I need to quickly let you hear. You don't have to go there, just hear it. He said, the Lord is good. Hmm? A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. All right? The Lord is good. This, that's Nahum 1 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he says, and the Lord knoweth them, or he knoweth them that trust in him. Is that correct? Now, he is good. He didn't say because he does good, that's why he's good. No, he is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble, right? He knoweth them that trust in him. Now, he didn't say uh, a stronghold in the day of trouble, he would deliver everybody. He didn't say that, or deliver everybody that calls on him. No, that's not how it works. Those that trust in him, he says he's a strong good for those that trust in him. Who are those that trust in God? They are those who are walking in the realm of experiential knowledge. I told you that. I said the realm of general knowledge produces hope. Revelation knowledge produces faith. Expression knowledge produces trust. And you know, this God told me there's another realm called the realm of critical truth. Realm of critical truth. <laughs> I just left it there. <laughs> Let it just be hanging because I've not finished just three. <laughs> critical truth. And then he began to show me um, that's the, 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 the word level, the honey level of the word. Okay? So, and that's very true because if you look at the, the in classifying this whole, um, the word of God and all that, it tells you the milk, meat, strong meat, and then there's honey. Okay, so if you go by the parallel um, combination or comparison, you find general knowledge, milk, um, um, revelation knowledge, meat, um, expression knowledge, strong meat, critical truth, honey. Is that true? So we, we are going to deal with that another day. Critical truth. Say, what, what, what does that, what, what is critical truth? What does that produce? <laughs> oh, boy. Does it produce, because you already have love, uh, you already have um, um, hope, you have faith, you have trust. So what does critical truth produce? That's a deep one. We shouldn't touch that now. Let me not let it out so quickly. Okay. Hallelujah. So do, do you understand why you are saved? They are just to just say, we are children of God. We are all equal in the sight of God. <laughs> we are equal in the sight of God. <laughs> it's not true. Please. We are not. I've heard, I've heard people I respect also saying that thing, but they are wrong. That's just a relative truth. It's not an absolute truth. I told you truth can either be relative or absolute. Relative truth changes in the, in the, in the presence of absolute truth. It's not true. We are not equal in the sight of God. It's not true at all. Are not. Now listen, I'm not trying to establish um, a, a dichotomy economy in the house of God. Like, oh, you're trying to bring a division of superiority and inferior. No, no I'm not doing um, bringing a division. Okay, about uh, who is inferior or superior. I'm not trying to do that at all. Okay, please, I'm not trying to do that at all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So don't say, okay, why are, you, why are you trying to bring a division now? Why are you trying to divide God's children into superior and inferior? No, that's not the reason for the dichotomy. That's not true. The reason is this. When you study the Bible, you find out that God said to the people of Israel, because you are precious in my sight, I will give men a ransom for your life. Uh -uh. <laughs> are the people of Israel not men? Yes. Are the other ones not men? Yes, but I will give men a ransom for your life. If they are equal in the sight of God, why would he give some a ransom for others? Did you not know also in the Old Testament what he said to Moses? He said, the stranger that comes to the tabernacle shall die. Only the priest should come. I thought they are equal in the sight of God. So if the priest can come, why can't the stranger come? Are you listening to me? When Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown by God, when God overthrew those, the plan of the city, Lot's wife looked back 
and became a pillar of salt. Abraham looked and nothing happened to Abraham. Why? Why was Abraham not on the pillar of salt? Because the Bible says Abraham beheld the smoke of the city, meaning he looked. The same city that Abraham looked on, Lot's wife looked at it and became a pillar of salt. But they are equal inside of God. Miriam and Aaron were against Moses. Miriam was leprous. Aaron wasn't leprous. How come? They, both of them stood against Moses. Why was Miriam leprous and Aaron was not leprous? So don't come here and say, I'm not saying um, um, God has preferential treatment. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in terms of value, we are not the same in the sight of God. In terms of value. If we are all equal in sight of God, then nobody should go to hell. Yes, we are all of God's children. In fact, not even all of us. That has to, has to be clear about this, okay? All, all humans are not children of God. Because even God that came to the earth said, you have your father, the devil. I mean, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Jesus came and said, I never born you. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. <laughs> you know, you know some say, how can you say that? That Jesus said that. He said, you have your father, the devil. That's John 8, 44, remember? You have your father, the devil. This is Jesus because he read. You have your father, the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of, of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. You have your father, the devil. And then you go to 1 John 3. John, John, John shows us the difference. He said, he said, hearing um, are the children of God made manifest of the devil. First John 3, let me read that to you quickly for a reason. I, I'm just trying to lay this argument to rest once and for all. Let's declare victory for this argument. First John 3 verse 8, it says, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. From the beginning, for this proposition of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God do, does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and, and, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. All right, verse ten. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Have you seen that? The dichotomy is there. Well, he said, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So there are children of God and the children of the devil. So you can't say all humans are the same inside of God. It's not true. It's not true at all. As much as we try not to offend, it's not true. Hallelujah. So do you understand God's purpose for our salvation? Do you understand it? Because if you have the understanding, you will never struggle with, with motivation for spiritual growth. You never struggle with the momentum for growth. You find that you're always, you're always um, in the habit of doing things for growth. In the habit. You find that you always want to be the best, of, the best version of yourself. When you understand God's purpose for our salvation, you find that you're always doing things to be the best version of yourself. No challenge about spiritual things is a result of the ignorance. The ignorance. There are people who feel comfortable not praying for weeks. I feel sick. I start feeling sick. A day, if I have not prayed enough, I start feeling sick. I start looking for what to do. I start looking for every opportunity to just speak in other tongues, do something spiritual. Let me just worship in tongues. I, I just, I feel dead. You know, it's like, it's like a fish. Have you, have, have you ever seen a fish out of water? It regoes, passing out. It, it can't live outside of water for 10 minutes. A fish can't survive outside of water for 10 minutes. It will die. Who die? And you find a child of God out of fellowship for one week and it's fine. You start wondering, are you genuinely born again? You find some do wicked things and they are, and they are cool. Their conscience is not working. 
Are you a child of God like this? You find of us who make the mistake immediately we are on our knees. Oh God. Oh God. I saw some will commit sin and drink water. Clean their mouth. Wipe their face. Watch movies. As though nothing, as though nothing happened. You, you mean you do wickedness and you're fine? No. The nature of God can be fine with sin. No. No. The nature of God can be at rest with sin, with error. I'm telling you. Except that nature has been subdued by the human nature. Suppressed in you by the human nature. So, go, just could go ahead right now uh, and give your offerings, okay? Give your tithe, your faithful, specify which one you're giving. And then, if you're participating online, just go ahead. It is on your screen. Go ahead and give the Lord. You know, you honor the Lord with these things. This is honor the Lord with your substance, not with your mouth, not with your lips. So, just go ahead and, and offer all of them to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And while you're doing that, please, so much has just happened, right, that I may not be telling everything. But I want to just, as an act of faith, just... Touch my palm as an art of faith. Just touch my palm. Just touch my palm. My palms, rather. Just touch them as an art of faith. Thank you, Father. But while you put these hands right now, going forward, those palms of yours, just put them on anything you want to put them. You will feel the power of God through them. Miracles will happen. Put them on your loved ones, sick people. Just touch people with these palms going forward. They will cast out devils. You meet people that are filled with devils. You talk with them. The power that makes them will command their obedience. You make contact with their bodies. Be, the devils will go. It's a new commission you have just received right now by the Holy Ghost. And no disease will resist the anointing you're carrying right now. Nothing will resist them. I give them to you freely. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's time to weaponize. I command the sickness to go right now. I command the weakness to go right now. I command the limitation to leave right now. I command the confusion to go right now. I call their names and I call them George. I declare them George right now. And I command the wrath of God against your limitations, your struggles, your fears, your doubts, your unbeliefs, your captivities, your bondage, whatever they are. Poverty, lack, insufficiency, lack of job, loss of opportunities. I command an end to your singlehood. Right now, it's time to be united with, your, with the man of God's dream, the woman of God's dream for your life. Right now, I command doors to open for you right now. I command miracles to begin to come in right now. I command the fullness of the blessings into your life right now. Right now. Receive over and above miracles to become signs and wonders in the earth because it has been written of me and my children that the Lord has given to me we are for signs and for wonders now receive all of God to be a sign and a wonder in the earth right now right now not tomorrow right now by the power of the Holy Ghost by the authority of Jesus in the name of Jesus I command these things that are responsible for delaying your life to go. I pronounce them broken to pieces. Right now. 
the name of Jesus I rebuke Satan and all hell concerning you I speak the wrath of God against the things that have struggled with your victory your success your happiness your health right now for as the Lord said to Moses <laughs> this is specific this is coming right now for as the Lord said to Moses those who seek your life are dead I declare the things that seek your success that stand away from your success prosperity abundance your marriage your relationship your jobs your finances your effectiveness in so winning making disciples he giving you all for God in fact this in life I declare to you by the Spirit of God they are dead now the habits the bad ones are dead I'm telling you this is a, 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 a word of prophecy for you it's a realm for you right now the headache is dead the cancer is dead the diabetes is dead it's dead people of God this is coming from the Lord right now the diabetes is dead the disease is dead the affliction is dead Thus says the Lord, the things that seek you, that are not of God, are dead. The things that hold you down, that beset you, that make you stagnant, are dead. Your fears are dead. Ah, death is dead. Hell is dead. Say the Lord. Listen, I'm telling you this. This is so strong. This is a thought, says the Lord. Your confusion, dead. Whatever is in your life, is in your body, whatever it is, in your body, in your life, in your spirit, in your soul, whatever it is, that is not consistent with the glory of God for your life, thus says the Lord, it is dead. Look to your right, prophetically, just open your eyes, look to your right, look to your left. You can look around you if it's possible and i'm telling you right now you cannot find them anymore because they are dead they have been swallowed up of the power of the holy ghost up, up until now the lord gave you victories in measures but this time they are dead for a life of constant victory constant triumph and now, blessed be God, who leads you in constant triumph. To him be all the prayer. Lift your hands towards heaven and give him praise. Lift your hands and give him praise. Oh, Sheila, ba 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 Kashida. We give you praise. I want to mean this prayer. Just say with me right now. Oh Lord God, I believe all of the claims of your word. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ was offered for my offenses. He died and was raised again to life for my justification. Today, I declare Jesus Christ is Lord. And I ask for the remission of sins of my soul. I ask for eternal life of my spirit. And by faith in you and in your word, I receive the remission for all my sins. I receive eternal life of my spirit. I declare this day I am born again. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I declare God as my Father. Father God, I thank you. And I ask you to come place your seal of ownership over me. I ask for the Holy Spirit of promise. And in Jesus' name, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thank you, my Father. Today, I become a citizen of heaven and a member of the family of God. 
Father, come take your place in my life. The name of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, I just want you to, re- to, to open up yourself right now for the Holy Spirit to do a work in your life. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. For the rest of you in the meeting, I want you to join me to speak in other tongues for 60 seconds for those that have just received the Holy Spirit. And those that have just received the Holy Spirit right now, open your mouth and pray. Because you have just been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray right now. Shalamangre disto jele paridiga soja lege brondo sevra ika. Go ahead. Come and pl- take your place, O oh Lord. Hey, Lago said, the rest of us speak in our tongues. Come and take your place, O oh Lord, in my life. Come and take. Glory to God, your place. Yes, Lord. In my life, come and take your Jesus said, the amount of meditation you give to the word, to that same essence, to that same degree, virtue, revelation, insight shall be multiplied to you. When you hear the word of God, what really happens to you is that you are inspired, challenged, motivated, and refreshed. The blessing begins in the doing of the word. So the blessing of the word of God is activated by doing the word. It says, be not here as only deceiving your own selves. James chapter 1 22 to 25. Be not hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So I I challenge you to begin to practice the word. And Jesus said, when you do his word, say, I am my father, we come, I will make our abode with you. You want want God to to make his abode with you? Yes, start to practice God's word. Meditate it. Because to practice the word of God, you have to, you have to understand it. To understand the word of God, you have to meditate it. And you know, meditation must be intentional. It doesn't happen by accident. So you meditate the word to understand it. As you understand, you practice. You practice it, you activate the blessing. It says the word of God is life to those who find it. Jesus said, the amount of meditation, hallelujah, the amount of meditation you give to the word, to that same essence, to that same degree, virtue, revelation, insight shall be multiplied to you. As you meditate it, insight is given to you and through that insight you receive of God's word you practice it and you find you start having uncommon results in life you know we are not of them that just hear the word of God we are them that understand the things that belong to our peace and give performance to them you want the word of God to be life to you then there are things you must do number one he says my son pay attention to my word you must pay attention to it. Number two, it says, incline your ears to my saying. You must incline your ears to the sayings of God's word. Number three, it says, keep them in the midst of your eyes. And then he says, number four, let them not depart from your heart. Why? He says, when you do these things, it shall become life to you. So when you want, you've got to become life. Rather than just letter, you must do this for things.